ANA eLearning Academy is brought to you by CDN Graysheet, a trusted source of rare coin and currency valuations since 1963. joining us today at the ANA eLearning Academy. The ANA would like to thank our eLearning partner Graysheet for their support on the eLearning program. Today we have presenter Tim Ferreira and he's going to be presenting on documenting your collection, motives and methods for keeping records of your collection. Everybody will be muted for this presentation. If you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A box and I'll read them to the presenter at the end of the presentation. If you have more of just general chat, you can go ahead and put that in the chat box. Um, and now I'll turn everything over to Mr. Tim Ferreira. Thank you. And um, I'd like to thank everybody for coming today and checking out this presentation. Something I've been interested in doing for a while. I wasn't able to originally do it in February when I had planned. Um, so I'm glad that if you registered for the original, you've stuck around for this one. Um, like she said, this presentation is about documenting your collection, um, motives and methods for keeping records of your collection. Just tell you a little bit about myself before I get started. Um, I am in North Carolina. I'm a member of the ANA, of the ANS, PCGS, NGC, CAC, um, and the North Carolina Numismatic Association. Um, my interest in collecting started at a young age. I found a large scent in my home somewhere, and I'm not sure why. Um, and I squirreled it away, pretty sure that it was going to be worth a fortune one day. Uh, and several years ago, I became really interested in Theodore Roosevelt. Um, and when I was looking on eBay for items related to Theodore Roosevelt, I came across the presidential dollar with his face on it. So I ordered that. Um, and that actually really sparked my, my interest in coins, and I've been collecting ever since. So I am a typical collector. I started as an accumulator, as, as many people do, um, and made my way into a collector. And I'll talk a little bit about that in just a second. Um, I'm going to go ahead and jump into it. And I will, I'm actually going to just stop my video, but you should still be able to hear me okay. All right, so let's get into it. So this presentation is meant to be a basic overview of coin collection documentation. We're gonna spend some time talking about why we document collections and then turn to some options for how to document your collection. Finally, we'll look at some special considerations when it comes to documenting your collection. And once I've covered all the slides that I've planned, there should be some time remaining um, for questions and at least attempted answers. And I'm also hoping to do a real quick demonstration of something for you. So let's talk about why you want to document your collection. Uh, the key is organization. By their nature, collectors tend to strive to make order out of chaos. Um, the collections of accumulators look a little something like this. A collector, on the other hand, will look at this and think, I want to pick up each and every piece of this. I want to study it, put it in its appropriate place. In other words, organize it and put it in some sort of order. If this wasn't a collector's instinct, um, then collecting by date and mint mark never would have become popular. Coin albums and folders naturally appeal to us. Things are displayed in a chronological order. You admire them from top to bottom and from left to right. So documenting your collection really takes your organizational instincts to the next level. I've listed a few other reasons here, which I'm gonna go over next. So knowing what you have is important to you. Um, and being able to quickly review what you have review what you need, and your financial positions are important to many collectors. Some methods of documenting lend themselves nicely to doing additional analysis. This could be um, something like reviewing your expenses. If you wanted to track the precious metal content of your collection, for example, 
you might even notice trends about your own preferences. If you're looking at um, your collection written down in a way such that you've categorized certain things, you might pick up on some trends that you didn't realize were important to you, and that'll help you refine your collecting interests. It's also good for just getting a sense of the, a general sense of the value of your collection. There's another good reason why you want your document, why you're, you want your collection documented, and that is protection in case of theft or loss. So sometimes um, bad things happen. And in the event that your collection is stolen um, or lost, and by lost, it could be lost in the mail, could be lost by fire or flood or some other natural disaster, uh, having a fully and well-documented collection will streamline and simplify the process of recovery um, or of filing an insurance claim. And it will ensure that you have at your fingertips the information you need to minimize any financial loss. One other reason uh, why documenting your collection is a good idea is when you're ready to dispose of your collection. There are a few reasons why you may need to part with your collection. Um, and having a well-documented collection will prove to be invaluable when that time comes. Most collectors um, have given some thought about how and when they'll dispose of their collection. Selling a collection is probably the most common avenue that collectors will take at some point in their lives. And whether that's to pay for a large expense, um, to cash in on an investment, or partially fund a retirement, selling a collection is a common way to dispose of your collection. If your collection isn't organized and records haven't been kept, not only will selling it be more difficult, but you're also unlikely to get the best price. Other collectors are gonna wanna pass along their love of coins to a friend or a relative at some point during their lives. This may be a gift of a handful of items or an entire collection. And being able to pass along detailed records will not only help the recipient understand what they have, but it'll demonstrate how important the gift is, as it was obviously meaningful enough to you to keep meticulous records. And finally, as coin design enthusiast Benjamin Franklin once said, in this world, nothing can be said to be certain except death and taxes. Many collectors do not wish to part with their collections during their lifetime and instead make arrangements in their wills for their collections to pass along to another individual or to an institution such as the ANA. Passing along as much documentation and information as you can will help the new owner or the custodians understand what it is that they have and it'll help them make decisions that are right for them about what they want to do with the collection. And since I mentioned taxes, it's important to know that there are many locations and situations in which your sale or gift could be subject to taxes. Regardless of how you plan to dispose of your collection, it's important to have records of purchase amounts and either sale amounts or current values, depending on the situation. There are many books out there on this topic, um, and I would refer you to them to learn more about disposing of a collection and the potential tax implications. So these past couple of slides have just gone over a few of the very many good reasons uh, to keep documentation of your collection. So I wanna talk a little bit about how you should go about doing this. You're gonna see there are multiple options. For starters, uh, you could of course, commission an artist to paint portraits of you holding each and every one of your coins. Uh, this is definitely the most awesome way to do it. Uh, it's probably ill-advised. So this documentation alternative isn't ideal for probably many reasons. Although again, it is the most awesome way to do it. Uh, one key reason is there are a lot of details that you wanna be sure you're capturing for each item in your collection. Details that you're gonna wanna write down and store in some way. There are a lot of interesting aspects to coins and each item in your collection will have its own data points that you'll want to be sure to write down or document. These include things like the country of issue, the denomination, what year it was minted, 
where it was minted, the grade, if you have it, uh, acquisition date and how much you paid for it, what you sold it for, when. Some things that are nice to have include what is it made of? What's the metallic composition of this coin? If it was sent in for grading, um, which grading company was it sent to? If it was certified, what's the certification number? Does it belong to a specific type or a variety? What's the current value? Are there associated reference numbers that you would find in other sources or books? Um, like a KM number, for example. And sometimes you just wanna make some general notes about the coin, um, different things that strike you as interesting about it or identifying characteristics, for example. Really the options are endless about the types of information that you are going to document about your collection. And we're gonna talk some about many methods that you can use. Um, and you'll decide as you get into it, what's most important to you and what you value. So I'm gonna start with the most basic and simplest method of documenting your collection. Each coin or item um, is stored in an enclosure of some sort. And whether that's a folder or an album, could be flips or capsules, two by twos or slabs. Um, and it's gonna be labeled in some way. These labels will correspond to paper records, which you would maintain separately. So whether you create a template for documenting that you can print and write onto, or you're just using a notebook with some hand-drawn columns, each coin can be cross-referenced between the markings on the label and the corresponding line or location in your paper documentation. Think of some of the classical numismatists from a century or more ago, and that's basically what you're doing. Um, you have the item in a container, the container is labeled, and it corresponds with the document that provides additional details. Although this is a pretty rudimentary way of documenting your collection, um, we can be glad that the earliest numismatists were disorganized and kept documents in this way, because in many cases, this type of documentation has enhanced our ability to discover and track a coin's provenance. Now, this method has some pros and cons, as you can see on the screen. Some of the pros are it's simple. Um, it's a matter of having a pen and some basic supplies and making notes. It's cheap for all the reasons I just mentioned of why it's simple. And it is an effective way by being able to jot down on the container um, some identifying details and then cross-reference it to your paper documentation. You're meeting the re basic requirements of documenting your collection. You're creating a record of what it is that you have. There are some downsides to this um, method. So one is the potential loss of records, um, items getting separated from their containers or loss of the actual notebook or um, document where you have this information written down. It is relatively labor intensive because you do need to use quite a few supplies um, and you everything is very manual as far as what you're writing on the containers, how you're cross-referencing it to the paper. Um, and I think maybe the biggest drawback of this method uh, is that you can't really manipulate any data. Once you've written it down, it's there. You can obviously cross things out. Um, you can start over if you'd like, but it's a little more complicated to make changes partial, part of the way down the road. Um, you're gonna find it's really hard to do an analysis when you're just working on something that's a paper list. So the next step up from this method, uh, at least as far as sophistication level goes, is to take advantage of opportunities that are offered on coin-related websites. I would consider this somewhat of an intermediate step. Major third-party grading services offer free accounts uh, where you can document your collection. These include PCGS and NGC. Both services uh, provide this service free of charge even if you aren't interested in submitting coins for certification or grading. Of course, you do have to register an account, but it doesn't cost any money. 
With PCGS, you're able to add your inventory to an electronic record, regardless of whether you wish to participate in the associated coin set registry program or not. NGC offers a set registry program where coins certified and graded by either NGC or PCGS may be entered as part of a predefined set or as a custom set. As far as I'm able to tell, NGC does not currently offer the ability to add non-graded or non-certified coins. The PCGS version, you can add raw coins um, by entering in the details yourself. They're not part of competitive sets, but if your intention is to document your collection and not necessarily participate in a set registry, then that shouldn't be much of an issue. There are other websites dedicated to coins that also offer this service at no charge. Um, some examples include Numista, Ucoin, and CoinWorld. If you're an ANA member, and I hope that you are, you have access to the My Collections section of the website, where you can find um, under My Account, a tab that says My Collections, and begin entering in data about your collection there. You can enter in the collection and inventories of any items you want to be stored electronically um, through that portal. As with the labels and paper records method, and like we'll see with all of the options, there are definitely some pros and cons with choosing to document um, in this manner. So some of the pros, it is free. As far as I can tell, all of the sites that I mentioned um, require registration, creating a user ID and password, um, but do not charge uh, for this service. It's easily accessible. This is something that you can access anywhere because it is web-based. So whether you are on your home computer, if you're at work on a computer, on your mobile phone, anywhere where you have access to the internet, you can easily access the information that you've entered in. Most of these also have built-in databases, which is a really convenient way for beginning to enter your data as you're documenting your collection. I'm going to show you um, in some slides coming up a little bit of what I mean when I talk about that. Some of the drawbacks or cons of using this type of um, service is that it's not fully customizable. You're basically filling out a web form for each item in your collection, and you're limited to the fields that are, that are displayed for you to enter. Um, there aren't many where you can have user customized fields, so it's not fully customizable in that sense. As with anything that's online, there are some potential privacy concerns. Obviously, a lot of the security of that is going to come back to you, your own ability to keep your login credentials protected and safe. Um, but as with any online system, there's always a risk of a breach and maybe you don't want um, strangers knowing exactly what is in your collection or what it's worth. So consider some potential privacy concerns. But by and large, these are gonna be hosted on secure websites where um, if you're comfortable doing online banking, you're, it's the same level of risk. The very thing that makes it easily accessible can also be a drawback in this case in that it does require an internet access or internet connection to access the collection and the details that you've entered in. So if for whatever reason you are somewhere where you do not have internet access, you won't be able to access the information that you've entered. One thing to note um, is that in addition to the internet browser version of these sites, some of the websites also offer related standalone apps um, where you can manage your collections inventory. And this really does make it convenient for on-the-go review and in many cases, on-the-go editing. So on the next few slides, I'm gonna show you some screenshots of what some of these look like so that you can familiarize yourself with what's available. Now this might be difficult to see depending on the size of the screen that you are watching this on, but this is an example of how you would add an item on the PCGS set registry. And again, you don't have to be a registry participant to keep track of your inventory 
um, on PCGS's website. You'll see along the top, there are three tabs, three different ways of adding in items into the inventory. The first tab is add PCGS items. So this is where you would type in the certification number of your certified coin, and it would populate as many of the details as it has about that coin. So it's going to automatically have a PCGS number in a variety. It's gonna include the date. Um, it's going to include the country of origin, the mint mark, all of that stuff. You will not have to enter separately because it's already associated with that certification number. Now this is different, remember, from the NGC version where you can enter both PCGS and NGC items into the collection through this method. Um, the example that I've pulled up here is from the second tab, which is adding a non-PCGS item. And here's where you can enter in information um, that you have. So if there is a corresponding PCGS number, and chances are there are, um, you can search for the country of origin, the denomination, the year, the mint mark, and it will fill in as much as it can for you. The rest of the information you are able to fill in yourself. Um, such as the date that you purchased it, how much it cost you, um, what is its current value in your estimate, the where did you get it from, which is in many cases a really important thing to um, capture when you're documenting your collection. If you've sold it, who was the buyer and when did you sell it to them and for how much, as well as some additional comments. Um, once you've entered that information in, you just press add non-PCGS item and it will add it into your inventory. And a third way of adding information in through this method is to import the items from a CSV. And a CSV is a very simple spreadsheet. Um, and we're gonna talk some more about spreadsheets a little bit later on. But one of the great things about having the CSV is that it goes both ways. You can import your collection into a website like this by uploading a CSV. And if you've already gone in and updated all of your information in a website's um, inventory, such as this one, you're often able to export that CSV, which is a great starting point if you wanna create your own spreadsheet and customize it to meet your needs. So we'll talk about that a little bit more coming up. This is a example of how you would add in um, elements of your collection into the Numista website. So basically it's popping up, it looks a little bit like a search engine and you're gonna start typing in some information, some of the key information about your coin. So as you can see on the right, I had already typed in some information. I believe I put in 1999 um, quarter proof and then it pulled up some options for me. Once it's identified which is the coin that I'm looking to add, you just press that button with the arrow going into the tray. And that is one way to add it to your collection. And it's as simple as that. Numista also offers the ability to indicate whether it's something that you wanna to add to your wish list because you don't already have it um, or not. So you can indicate that right at the manage my collection section of the website. Once you've selected from what's available to you from using the built-in database, you're gonna customize it to your coin. So you're gonna indicate, maybe it wasn't a proof, maybe it was an uncirculated. Um, and the mint mark is gonna be, you know, from Philadelphia or from Denver instead. What grade is it? Um, how many of them do you have? And whether you'd be interested in swapping it with, um, or exchanging it with other members of Numista. You're then gonna be able, you have the option to add a picture if you would like, and then you're going to save or save and add again. One of the things that I really like about Numista is once you've entered in some coins, um, it will populate with some really cool charts, graphs, and statistics. Look a little bit like this. So for example, I had just added in um, a little over 300 coins. Um, and it's going to show you a map of the world. It'll identify where is it, these coins that you've entered, where are they coming from? It'll give you a breakdown of how you indicated what the grade is, a breakdown of the composition of the coins, as well as the coin types, whether it was um, standard circul circulation, uh, circulating commemorative, non-circulating. 
It'll even give you some really cool stats, like what's the total weight of your collection? Um, what is the value based on what you've entered? And then an estimate um, of the value as well. And then it's got some interesting stuff uh, about some of the statistics about your coin. So which one was the smallest and which one was the lightest or oldest or largest? What's the heaviest and the newest? And it'll give you this nice chart down at the bottom showing what are the years of the coins that you've entered into your collection. This is an example of what it would look like on the Ucoin website. So again, you just log in, you create an account and log in, you select my collection and add new coin. And just like with the Numista website, it's gonna give you a couple of drop downs so that you can start by searching the database. And you're gonna search the database based on the country and then the year and then the denomination. And it's gonna pull up some options for you. And once you click on one, you'll have the ability to add it into your records, um, as well as give some specifics about your particular coin that you have in hand. Coin World, which publishes a um, magazine and podcast, also offers you the ability to store information about your coins in what they call the portfolio. And in this case, you would just log into the website, create a username and password, and click Add Coin to Portfolio. Similar to what you've seen in some of these other services, you select a denomination, um, a series, a type, a year, mint mark, grade, grading company, variety, and it gives you the opportunity to enter in how much you paid for it, when you bought it, how many you have, and any additional notes you may wish to enter. And then you click Add Coin. The result of that is it's going to create a nice list for you um, where it will show the picture on the left, followed by the information you've entered. It shows you the, your purchase date and price next to the value. Um, and then it also shows you the change. So this is gonna show your profit or loss based on the difference between the current value and your purchase price. The information that is populated into the value when you're using CoinWorld's version is coming from CoinWorld's um, list of prices that comes out in their uh, magazine and their periodical. So that is automatically updated. So that's one nice thing compared to keeping paper records is you're going to have that opportunity to have values automatically updated and you don't have to do that manual work. As I mentioned, the ANA, if you're a member, also has the ability to add in information about your collection. And you just go to the website, log in, click my account, and then you're going to have the ability to click my collections and add a collection. It's a couple steps. Um, if you're starting from, from scratch, you're going to just give a title of your overall collection as well as the description of that collection, and then add in a photo that you want associated with that. And then step two and three are the steps that you're going to do for each coin. Again, you're going to select from a list of drop downs. You can add an image of your own coin. And then it gives you the opportunity to also add tags to the coin. This gives you also some flexibility about how you want it to be viewed on the website. Do you want it only to be viewable by you as the person who's entered it, or do you want it to be viewable by others as well um, for other people to be able to see what's in your collection? And then you can save it either as a draft or as a published document and click save. So that's a, a quick review of some of the websites that are available. Another intermediate step is going to be the use of software and apps. So if you're interested in documenting your collection in a database that is simple to use and query, uh, you may consider finding software that'll meet your needs and work with your operating system. Personally, I use a software that's available for Mac called US Coin. Other popular options include the Windows only EasyCoin, um, Exact Change, which works on both Macs and PCs, Coin Manage, and Open Numismat. There are others that are worth exploring as well. Um, a quick Google search for coin software will pull up many of these for you. Um, as with the website based documentation option, some of these have associated apps that will provide you access to managing or reviewing your collection on multiple devices. For example, on your laptop, as well as your phone or tablet. 
US Coins companion app for iPhone or iPad is called US Coin Plus. It works pretty seamlessly. And with the information being backed up into the cloud, it's able to keep both up to date so that you don't have to, um, it's not like having two separate programs where you have to add in each coin twice. It will um, refer to itself no matter which device you're looking at. There are some also standalone apps that you'll find in either the um, Android or Apple App Store. Um, but many of these do focus on specialties or series, and they often have some limitations on the type of information you can document for each coin. Um, and many of them actually serve merely as a checklist of sorts. So as with the website documentation option, these products often um, calibrate with current precious metal prices, recent auction results, et cetera, for helping you with your valuation so that you don't have to do that as a manual process. Let's talk about the pros and cons of taking the software approach. Um, some pros are that they are frequently simple and intuitive to use. Once you've entered in a few coins, um, you'll find that it's quite simple to keep up with. I particularly think that the aesthetics of using a software program is nice. It's nice to be able to see the photos available um, and it just sort of looks polished and sophisticated. You also have an ability to run reports directly out of the software. Um, some examples of standard reports from the program I use are a profit and loss statement, insurance details report. Um, you can create a buy list metals, so it's listing the weights and totals of the precious metal content of your collection, or just a detailed listing of the entire thing. And like I mentioned on the previous one, you can export a CSV of your collection, which will help you if you decide to go the website, website route um, to upload and get a good start on tracking your collection in another platform. These often have built-in analysis as well where it's going to give you details similar to what I showed you on the Numista website. Um, it'll show you the precious metals content and the current value of that based on either the spot or melt price um, of the precious metal. Those are just a couple of examples. Some of the cons associated with using a software is they are typically not free. So there is an associated expense um, and sometimes well, like with a lot of things in life, you do get what you pay for um, in many cases. So if it's something that you are interested in using, I would um, consider starting with a free trial and, and then purchasing it once you decide it's something that you're willing to use and keep up with and that it's gonna meet your needs. Software is always, is always going to rely on its developers for updates. So some of the um, programs that I mentioned are frequently updated and kept up with, um, but you wanna be careful and make sure that you're using a software that does receive updates um, from developers. Another potential drawback, depending on your collecting specialty, is that some of them are designed for coinage from specific countries. So U.S. coin, for example, as you can imagine, focuses on United States coinage, as the name implies. Uh, Easy coin focuses on U.S. and Canadian coinage. Coin manage is limited to the U.S., Canada, and the U.K. Of the products I mentioned, Exact Change and Open Numismat both have world coin databases built in, so that's a good option if your um, collecting interests expand outside of the United States. And the other great thing is Open Numismat is actually a free software to download. So that would be a good one to start with if that's what you're interested in, um, or if you're interested in trying out using a software for documenting your collection. So like I did with the website, the next couple of slides are gonna show you some examples of these programs I've mentioned. So this is a screenshot of what it's like um, to add a coin in the program I use, which is the US coin. Um, I've, this is after I've clicked to add a coin, I'm able to select the country and the type, the issue. The reference number is refers back to the PCGS reference number. There are some optional fields such as an import number and a mintage if you want to enter that. 
And then you've got three tabs where you can enter information about your purchase of it, when you bought it, how much you paid, where you got it from. Um, on the grade tab, you can enter in if it's been graded, um, as well as the serial number. And there's also a notes tab where you can add some additional information, such as the location of where you're storing that particular coin. This is then what it looks like when you have added um, multiple coins. It will show you um, the information in a list form, just as with a website. And you see the, you've got these columns where you can actually sort and filter by these columns as well. There are multiple um, icons up at the top. The restore and backup options, that's how you're saving backups of this file um, in the cloud. I think it's linked to um, a Dropbox account where it will restore and backup copies of what you've entered. The analysis button will pull up some of the various reports that you can run. And then the Excel button will help you to export it into a database or spreadsheet type format. This is an example of what it looks like on the EasyCoin software. Again, this is all gonna start to look very familiar. It's a lot of the same options. Um, this one has some more icons along the top um, that may not be super intuitive. So you're gonna wanna hover over those um, to get a sense of what it is each does. But you just enter in the various details that you are trying to document for your coin, um, upload photos if you have those and um, that is it for easy coin. Exact change, uh, similar. This is going to be using a built-in database to select the coins that you're wishing to enter and to uh, consider and enter additional details about. And then coin manage works very similar. Um, you can see a lot of these software programs sort of look and act alike. I think exploring with some of the free trials are gonna be a good way for you to decide which one is right for you. I happen to be a Mac user and so and a US coin collector. And so US coin is, is the best bet for me, but it may not be the case for you. So I, I encourage you to get some free trials um, and try different programs before you go all in on one and then decide that you prefer a different one. And here is a screen grab from Open Numismat. It works very similar to the others. Again, the biggest upside to this particular program is that it is free. Um, so I'll just show you that. This one I'm going to call advanced. This is the next method, but you can do it. It is simple. Um, and time permitting, and it looks like we will have some time. I'm gonna, I'll do a little demonstration of a couple of things for you in Excel. So this is how I started documenting my collection in a very unsophisticated Excel spreadsheet with just a handful of columns of things that were important to me about the coins. So Excel is a powerful tool that is simple to use once you've familiarized yourself with some of the common functions and features. There are tutorials readily available online. And additionally, there are pre-built spreadsheets also readily available to collectors and free to download, including on the ANA's website. Um, when you go to the website, you select resources and then tools, and then you scroll down, you'll see there's an option that says collection slash inventory spreadsheet. Um, and that will download a, a fairly simple spreadsheet. Um, as a good starting point for you to use in documenting your collection. Um, any of the pre-made templates that you find would be good starting points for collectors who are less familiar with setting up a spreadsheet. It'll help you document some of the critical bits of information that you want to document about your collection. You may find that once you've started, you begin customizing the spreadsheet in a way that better meets your needs and satisfies whatever your prerogatives are for documentation. One tip that I can offer related to using and or creating a spreadsheet to document your collection is to make liberal use of drop down lists for any details that you want to be able to search for, um, filter or sort by later. This will prevent you from making a typo as you enter and it'll ensure that all of the coins uh, meeting the criteria you select 
will display in your results. It's also a time saver um, once you've set it up. Creating a drop-down list in Excel is simple. Um, and again, there are tutorials available online. Um, but in general, I'll walk you through it and then I should have some time to show you in just a bit. Uh, in general, you're gonna add a tab or a worksheet where you store just the data that you want to capture in list form. You select the items on that list and give it a name. Um, and then on your primary worksheet where you're entering the data, you'll use the group name in the data validations option. Some of the pros and cons of creating a spreadsheet for use. Um, the pro, like I mentioned, there are free templates that are readily available. Spreadsheets are fully customizable. Um, like I said, I started with a really rudimentary version. It probably had six different bits of data about each coin. And then as I built my collection and became more interested, there were other elements of the coins that were interesting to me and that I wanted to have record of. And I would add new columns um, and new drop-down lists to choose from. Um, it's really, they're gonna be as simple or as complex as you want them to be. So if you're new to Excel, um, you'll find it's pretty straightforward and you can keep it as simple as you would like. If you are a whiz at Excel, and I am not, um, but you can do a lot of really interesting stuff um, with the program. It is a software that you're probably already familiar with to some extent. And like I mentioned, talking about the CSVs, it is really easy to import it into a software if you decide to go that route or to import it into one of the website options for documenting the collection. Some of the drawbacks of creating a spreadsheet is it's gonna take some time to set it up and you're gonna have to redo some things because I guarantee you that when you start, um, you're gonna have a sense of what it is you wanna capture. You're gonna enter in a hundred or more coins and then you're gonna decide there's one more bit that would be good to have uh, documented. Um, and then you're gonna have to look back at the first hundred coins. So one recommendation I would have for you is to look at some of the websites and the fields that they are asking about Download some of the templates as a starting point. You can, if there's a something that you don't care about, you can delete a column, um, but get a sense of what other people tend to document and then make decisions about what's important to you. If you're new to Excel, less is probably more. Start with just a few details about each coin. Um, if you're advanced at Excel or very good with Excel, probably more is better. Um, as a starting point, because you can always get rid of information, especially if you're having to look at each coin individually when you're entering in information, you don't wanna have to keep going back to the same one over and over again. Another drawback is unlike the websites and the software, they're gonna pull up nice reports and charts for you. You will need to design your own graphs and charts. And then finally, if keeping track of a value um, either of a resale price or precious metal content, if that's important to you to keep up with those values, just know that these are gonna be manually updated um, at whatever sort of cadence or frequency you want to update it. Uh, those other programs that we talked about are going to um, do this automatically for you. So you're gonna weigh your options about whether this is right for you or not. I did start with this and I eventually moved into a coin software, but I do have one spreadsheet that I keep up with um, regularly, which I'm gonna show you in a little bit. So this is an example of the spreadsheet that is downloadable and available from the ANA. Um, it's got some basic columns for you, date and mint mark, mintage, series, country, grade, um, you can read going across. Uh, like I said, this is a great starting point. Once you've decided what other details are important to you, it's easy enough to add in a column. Um, this is an example of what I built um, when I was using the Excel spreadsheet. There are additional columns to the right uh, that aren't readily visible. Uh, the last column that you can see says composition and or design, and the columns further to the right of that are sub-design variety, grade, graded by, 
most recent value, location, um, and then sort of a catch-all field that says identifying characteristics, misstrikes, errors, and comments. You'll notice the sheet at the bottom right says that says data. That's where I store the data for my dropdowns. For example, the general issue column utilizes a dropdown that matches the chapters of the Red Book, um, from colonial issues through small sense, all the way to pattern pieces and Philippine issues. Um, I added in international and ancient as additional options for me to have in that dropdown. Other good columns to take advantage of dropdowns are mint marks and the graded by columns. You'll also see that the tab just to the left of data is labeled quick lookup. On that tab, I added a simple pivot table that lets me easily find coins that meet the identified criteria, whether it's the country, year, specific issue, denomination, et cetera. A pivot table will also let you take full advantage of the most recent value column because Excel is at its core a calculator. So I could, for example, pull up just my silver coins in the pivot table and easily see the total value. I could, I suppose, get fancy and have a resale value column and a melt value column. And with a few quick formulas, update the current melt value in one cell and have it recalculate the melt value of all coins in a particular metal composition. But again, it's gonna depend on your interests and your comfort level with Excel. I mentioned that I've switched to a software, but I do keep up with one spreadsheet. And this is the spreadsheet that I do keep up with. Um, my, I'm particularly interested in commemorative coins. I consider them to be the foundation of my collection. And so they have their own spreadsheet. I do have all of them certified and I track the value over time. Um, of course, color coding anything makes it look a little fancier and it helps me to visually track the rise and fall of prices over time. In this version of the spreadsheet, I made liberal use of creating dropdown fields so that I could sort and filter by type, year, denomination, um, the finish, whether it's proof or uncirculated, grade, where I have it stored, um, et cetera. Finally, uh, just a few other considerations you wanna make regardless of how you decide to document your collection. In particular, including high quality photos of your coins in your documentation is important because it serves multiple purposes. First of all, it appeals to my desire to look at my coins without having to get up and get them. That may just be my own issue, but high quality digital versions of the real thing are wonderful to have. Several months ago, I took an ANA eLearning Academy course on coin photography and photo editing, and that really helped me get started on documenting my collection in that way. Um, I have even contemplated using a photo book printing service just to have a coffee table book um, of the photos I took of my own commemorative coins there's obviously an element of a vanity project in that, but among my many loves, coin books are up there and I thought that would be a cool thing to do that would be unique to me. Another reason to photograph your coins is to have them ready in the event of some sort of catastrophe. Stolen coins that have been photographed may be more recoverable than those that aren't. And if you do experience loss through a fire or flood, having photographs helps to demonstrate the accuracy of your documentation and can serve as a form of proof of ownership. Second is the critical issue of having backups. All of the methods we discussed require backups of one form or another. If you're old school and you have your documentation in a notebook, make copies frequently and store those copies somewhere else, somewhere away from where you store the actual notebook. If you're using a website, periodically download that CSV of your collection from the site. All the sites that I reviewed with you have this capability. For software applications and Excel sheets, be sure to link them to a cloud service where backups can be safely stored. Another alternative would be to store copies on an external hard drive, which again, keeps somewhere away from where your primary documentation is stored. And just like anything else that gets neglected, housework, for example, at some point it will become a burden and you might dread making it right. So regular maintenance of your documentation is key. I strongly recommend that you develop a habit or routine whenever you acquire new coins that will ensure that documentation of your acquisition is part of the process. Set rules for yourself if you have to. You know, every Thursday from 8 to 8.30, I'm gonna document any new additions to my collection, or I'm not going to acquire any new items until my existing items are fully entered into my documentation. Just as your collecting interests may wax and wane, so will your motivation to document. So keep it interesting. Um, take the time to improve your pictures that you'll wanna update your documentation with. 
add a column to your spreadsheet or try making a new pivot table. The key is to stay engaged with it. For me, I find the color coding and valuation over time to be motivating, even when the value goes down. So every other month, PCGS sends me the rare coins market report, and I use that as my cue to update the values in my commemorative spreadsheet. External reminders like that can help, especially if you experience a lull in acquiring new coins. And finally, make sure that you find the documentation method that meets your needs, that works best for you, and that you'll find intrinsically motivating. Um, sampled a few different ways to document. Many of the methods I discussed are free, and even the ones that aren't often come with free trials. So just as a final slide, I wanted to put up some specific um, sites for the things I mentioned, give you an opportunity to take a screenshot or um, otherwise jot down anything you might be interested in. I do wanna thank you for your time and attention. I hope you found this to be helpful um, or even the slightest bit motivating. Be happy to take questions um, as time allows. Um, I did mention doing a demonstration. I'm happy to do that, um, but I think first we'll turn to questions instead. All right. All right, so we do have a few questions for you, Tim. Um, first question would be, which websites have built-in databases for recording currency? So all of the websites that you see on the screen here do have built-in databases. The differences are going to be in what those databases, um, what their reference source is. So some of them are only going to have United States coins or you know, United States and Canada, for example. It's a little bit easier to use the databases on websites because it's simpler for developers who are putting the sites together to link it to other databases without having to update an entire software. So you do have some more flexibility when it comes to the websites. Okay. Um, next question would be, are metals and paper money and world coins also included in these, or is it mainly US? You know, it, again, it's gonna depend on the software or the website you're using. Several of them do have um, sort of subspecialties for countries. So the United States and Canada only. Um, as far as paper money, that is, I, I'm not as familiar with um, software or websites specifically for tracking your paper money. I'm sure that the third party grading services have that option um, if you wanna try those as far as documenting that, but that might wanna be something where you explore creating your own spreadsheet. Okay. Um, next question, and you may have touched on this a little bit, does PCGS, NGC, Ucoin, Numisma, or Coin World allow for you to export a database or spreadsheet? Yeah, as far as I could tell, and I, I tried looking again last night, all of them have the, op the option to export. Um, when I was creating uh, my commemoratives spreadsheet, I actually had entered my information into the Coin World portfolio and exported a CSV from there and used that as my starting point for creating my own spreadsheet. Perfect. And then is there any good way to attach images to a spreadsheet you design yourself? You can add images into um, an Excel spreadsheet. It's just a matter of having a folder on your computer where you've got the images stored and correctly labeled so that when you go into the cell where you want to add in the image, um, you're able to quickly find that and enter it in. It's going to not be as elegant as far as the size, maybe not being consistent. You may have to do some resizing, um, but it, it is an option to do that. Thank you. Um, next question is, do any of the software programs feed from multiple sources for a current value? Um, such as Gray Sheet Wholesale and CPG Retail or eBay? Yeah, so I'll, I can speak specifically to the software that I use, which is the US Coin software. And that does pull information from PCGS. It pulls information from Heritage, um, as well as eBay completed item sales. I know that the, um, the free version of the software, Open Numismat, that also pulls information. It can pull information directly from 
completed sales from eBay as well. Okay. Um, and then how do you update the current prices on the US coin software for a Mac? So the US coin software for a Mac, um, it's a matter of enter opening up the, okay, so there's two elements to this. One is it will automatically update the price information as far as a melt value. So if that's something that you're interested in, if the primary value of your coins is derived from the, the precious metal content, it will automatically update that value. Um, if you're wanting to update sort of a resale value, what you expect the coin to sell for, that's a little bit more of a, a manual process, but it does have those databases built in. Um, I think it was the top right part of the screen. You could click on Heritage or eBay and it would pull up examples of sold items that you could um, use as a deciding which one is probably the best match for your coin. And then I have a couple more for you. Um, in regards to Carlisle Coin Collector Assistant, is that more of for experts or dealers? I'm, I'm not familiar with that one, so I can't speak to it. Okay. And the, excuse me. So um, what do you think of iCollect.money? That's another one that I have not um, looked into. Perfect. And then does PCGS allow for non-US coins? I think you already answered that one. They do. And when you're, when you go in to enter in a coin, so if you're entering in the certification number, it's going to pull up your exact coin. If you are entering in something that's just a raw coin, for example, when you go to type into the search field, some details to help pull up a menu of what the coin possibly could be, there's a box to check on the right that says to include um, world coins in the results. Thank you. Do any of these help you grade a coin? They, um, I would say if you're using PCGS or NGC websites as your um, inventory management system, you are gonna have access to the other resources they have available um, as far as grading by looking at photos where you can compare. Um, but by and large, grading is, should be probably learned separately. And if it isn't graded by a third party, um, it's a really good idea to get a sense of how to grade a particular type of coin. Thank you. And I just have a couple more for you. Um, is it easy to take the ANA free spreadsheet and then eventually upload it to the CSV or as a CSV to PCGS? Yeah, that's a great question. So each website is gonna have its own list of sort of what it's looking for you to upload. So by starting with a spreadsheet, for example, for the one from ANA, you've got that information. The PCGS or any of the other sites, they're gonna also show you a template of what they're looking for, for an upload. And what you can do is if there are columns that match up, you just copy the data from one spreadsheet and paste it into the other. Um, a lot of times you don't need to fill in every cell when you're uploading it for it to populate your list. It'll just have blanks where you leave blanks. So it's, it is a really good starting point. Perfect. Thank you. And then what is the typical cost for some of the paid software and what um, options do you recommend? So the paid software can, can vary. Um, the US coin uh, software that I use, I think it was around $60. Um, and that is for the license. One drawback of that particular one, I will mention, um, it is my favorite, but one drawback is if you download the companion app, which as I said, will sort of talk to the other app as well on your computer, um, it is a separate cost for downloading that companion app. I wanna say it's $7 or so. So I'm pretty sure all of the software programs that I listed are less than $100. Um, just be sure that when you are making a purchase decision, that you're, you're reading the details of, does this include future upgrades to the software or would that be an extra expense? So just keep that in mind when you're making your decision. Thank you. And then the last question is, will you do this seminar again and when? That is a good question. It is a little too soon to tell. It's been recorded. Um, 
And honestly, uh, yesterday I was trying to think of how I could fake my death to get out of doing this. So, but it's done and I hope that you enjoyed it. And I'm, it sounds like you did. So I'm, I'm glad about that. But I would check out the recorded version of this at some point whenever that gets posted. All right, thank you. All right, thank you so much to our presenter, Tim Ferreira for such a educational um, presentation. I really learned a lot. I hope you all enjoyed it. Again, I'd like to thank Graysheet um, for their partnership with the ANA eLearning Academy, and we hope you enjoy us for future webinars. Have a great day.